Oh, how? Oh, how? What is it you are wanting to talk about? Um, Hi, Angel Raphael. <laughs> we have uh, a few questions that uh, regarding the coronavirus and the uncertain times that we're all facing together right now. And um, we're wondering why it is that the virus is happening right now to us. It is not happening to you. <laughs> it, it is with you and you are with it and you are evolving together. And although it is very difficult from your perspective to see this, but is that the virus it, it itself is, is here to help you in many respects. Eh? And it, it, it has come as an opportunity for self-preservation. And we want you to think about that for a moment eh? and to allow that uh, energy to, to drop into the heart center. For it is that as you are witnessing and watching everything that is unfolding and taking place, there is a lot of fear and there is a lot of worry and anxiety and concern and, and uh, many routines have been disrupted and businesses have closed uh, and uh, connections have uh, moved away and things have shifted and, and changed and been disrupted and much of it is very inconvenient and much of it is beyond inconvenience, it is painful. And uh, loved ones uh, have, have, have suffered and, and have passed and have moved on to the other side. And, and all of those things uh, you, you see as negative. Hmm? And although we never want to talk about just positive and negative for in the polarity of the human species and your understanding, you see things often as black and white and good and bad. And from our perspective, it is it is one energy and it, it is always moving and evolving you towards something greater, even if you can't recognize it from the point of view in which you are at. But from our point of view, we could see the human race was so asleep, huh? And we've been working with all of you for a very long, long time to awaken you, to bring you back into alignment with your divinity and to bring you back into the presence of the now connected to all things and to remember the love of who it is that you are. But what happened is that your ego has expanded so much, uh, not you particularly, but we're talking about the human collective uh, consciousness to a point uh, in which uh, it was in such a deep sleep uh, that it was unconsciously moving about, doing things without really taking into regard how it was affecting the whole where it was consuming and, and shopping and mindlessly numbing itself to have more things. It was uh, taking from the earth uh, consistently over and over and raping her until she was empty. It was traveling and moving about for self-pleasure, not to, with any regard to the atmosphere or to the air, or to the breath and the lungs of the earth. It was consuming and polluting and it was forgetting that Mother Earth uh, is your home and that without her, you have nothing. So she got very tired and she's taking a little rest. <laughs> and as she takes this little rest, her lungs begin to expand and her heart is beating again in a, a stronger way. And, and she is being able to, to open up her heart center and to heal, to rejuvenate, uh, and to replenish herself. And, and she is quick, uh, there's a great quickening in her being and an ability for her to restore herself quite quickly if you just give her a minute to have a breath. Uh, it's just like uh, when a mother has lots of little children and she's working and working, taking care of them over and over and that's all she does. Sometimes she just needs a rest. Uh, so that she can rejuvenate herself, perhaps go into a deep sleep. And then when she comes out, she has more to give to them, to nourish them and to care for them. So Mother Earth is taking a rest right now. But as she is taking a rest, so are you. You're all taking a rest. You're all going inward. And in this, you're preserving yourself uh, and you're allowing humanity to have an opportunity to continue to thrive, to continue to grow, to continue to be here on Earth uh, for a space to be here for all of you. There 
has been a lot of talk for a very long time about a moment in time in which there would be a change and an awakening, and that's where you are right now. And and we call it a wave, uh, and it is a global wave. It is affecting everyone across the earth in one shape or another. And it is that there will be four waves that will come. They may not come consecutively. There may be a long breath in between, or they may come rapidly, depending on on what is needed for the awakening of the consciousness. And as the human species over time and history has evolved, it is now that not so much your physical bodies are evolving in a way that you can perceive from your perspective on your timeline, but it is that your collective thinking and consciousness is evolving. And it has to evolve, it has to change, it has to return to purity and to stillness and to openness uh, in order for you to be able to merge uh, and work together in order to thrive on the planet. So this uh, crisis that you are all in with this virus uh, is actually an opportunity to preserve yourself as a race, uh, an opportunity for the earth to heal and an opportunity for the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren and the generations to come to have a home not only that is healthy and thriving but systems uh, and structural ways of being uh, to be shifted and to put into place uh, that allow for the whole of the collective uh, to be more what you might call an even playing field um, and for the great division of wealth uh, and poverty to begin to move more toward the center and for there to be a greater equilibrium and balance. Um, you're going through a great cleanse uh, and you're rebalancing yourself. And so that cleanse is occurring right now. And you might say, well, that's all well and good to say all of this, but many others are suffering and some are dying and many are in hospitals and others are working tirelessly to care for them. And this is true, and there is great pain in all of this, and there is a great hardship. But uh, we want to remind you of the larger perspective of the essence of your soul and your agreements and contracts signed before descending into form and matter onto earth. And many signed up to be in this wave to exit at this time in order to create this shift and change for the collective. And so it is a courageous act and does not in any way diminish the, the pain, the grief and the suffering of those on the front lines but they are doing heroic acts, as are those who are all involved in this process. So we want you to just take a step back and see it from this larger perspective. And we want you to know that we from the angelic realm love you and we are here right with you. And that we have brought you so many tools, so many teachings, so many understandings over years and years. And it is your time now to make a choice point to implement those uh, teachings or not. Um, You can choose to drop into fear. You can choose to drop into anxiety and pain. And we know that the anxiety and the waves of fear will come over you at times. And it's all right to feel them and allow them to pass, but not to dwell in them. We encourage you, as we always have, to disengage from the news, uh, from the black box, from the constant uh, um, source uh, of uh, energy that continues to amplify what's occurring. We're here to remind you that where you put your energy, your attention, and your thoughts uh, is uh, what begins to grow in your reality. And as you collectively begin to come together to put your energy toward healing, toward solutions, toward peace, uh, toward unity, and toward new systems and new ideas, new ways uh, of being and collectively working together, then that is where your focus is and your energy is that will begin to come into reality, into manifestation, into the projection of your actual reality. And so this will happen over a period of time. We want you to know that what you're experiencing now will not always be, that there will be times again where you will gather 
and have parties and kissed loved ones who are far and distant and that you will come together in deep gratitude for those many blessings in which you will honor them and not take them in any way for granted for the simpler things in which you had perhaps forgotten about so many blessings around you will will seem so dear to your heart as the doorways reopen to the way of life in which you have known but it is that life will never be the way it was before because it is the first wave of many to allow for the preservation, not so much of the earth, for she will always return, replenish uh, and regain her strength, for she is strong, but for humanity to remain here with her on this planet. And so as these waves come, your responsibility as a human race and as individuals is to drop into the presence of where you are, to use your creativity and your joy, your gifts and your laughter, to share them and express them with others, and and to be filled with as much love and compassion as you can within your heart, and to utilize all the teachings that I have shared with you for so long, and to implement them and to act upon them now rather than to dismiss them or put them aside and to have a choice point between whether you will choose in this moment love or you will choose fear or you will choose to see the larger perspective of the collective or only your own if you will choose to be one who gives or one who takes and it is that it is that choice point that will be the deciding factor or whether humanity will be able to move through this crisis uh, that you have labeled as a crisis quickly or slow and how it will unfold and where it is that you will move and how it is that you will evolve. Oh, 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 what is it? Thank you, Angel Raphael. Um, I know that a lot of us are feeling a bit helpless in these moments and we have a lot of time on our hands and of course we'll work on uh, following all of the teachings that you have shared with us but is there other things that we should keep in mind to continue to facilitate uh, growing at this moment and being helpful and cleansing ourselves and our society together? It is very important to work with all of your energy centers. For each one represents uh, something that needs to be brought back into balance uh, and each one is an opportunity to awaken all of your cells to a higher vibration. So as you become familiar with your energy centers and you tap into each one, they, they have something to tell you. If you tap into your root center, for an example, it uh, is the energy that is associated with survival and it, it can quickly drop into deep fear and anxiety of not having enough. But it is also the root center that connects you to Mother Earth. And it is also an opportunity to be outside, perhaps even to be barefoot, to, to, to feel Mother Earth's breath and her heartbeat, to, to get your hands in the soil and to garden, to take a walk and to see the blue sky and the clouds, to see the flowers blooming as the spring is upon you, to connect with the trees and the breath and the, the breeze, to perhaps even hear or see the ocean waves. If you're not able to physically be near Mother Earth outside and to get your feet in her soil or your hands in her soil, if you're not able to walk upon her for you are perhaps in a concrete building somewhere, unable to connect, we ask you to to watch videos, uh, to use uh, technology to your advantage, to to see the dolphins swimming in the oceans clear, to see magnificent, beautiful photographs of the waterfalls and the animal kingdom, of the sunrise and the sunset, uh, and and to see her magic and her beauty and her presence. and to feel her in some way, whether it's just out the window or to hear her birds chirping, to connect in 
any way in which you can to her heartbeat, to, to love her and to send gratitude down from your heart into hers and to feel her love come back up from beneath her up into you. Hmm? any way that you can and so in each energy center is a choice point eh? you can choose to open and to ground into mother earth or you can drop into the mental aspect of uh, the root chakra the root center which is fear and anxiety survival not enough greed hoarding having enough for me only worrying about myself eh? or you can connect and ground to the earth and open your heart to others and to share to perhaps uh, put up a sign at, uh, in your home or in your driveway if there's some, if someone driving by or perhaps they, they need something. Perhaps you have a few extra rolls of toilet paper you might want to put out for someone or a paper towel or some canned food. Perhaps you want to write a letter to someone. Perhaps you're musical and you could play the piano and share it for others to hear or help children learn how to play the piano. Perhaps you're an artist and you should paint and, and share your artwork. Perhaps you have a great sense of humor and you want to tell some jokes or make a funny video so people can laugh during this time. Find your creativity and utilize it. Creativity is very much in what we would call the second chakra, that area there, and that that can be completely shut down as well, which you can be closed, you can be dormant, you can distract yourself with things. And, and we're not saying that it's not all right to do something distracting once in a while to keep your mind off things. But, but if you can choose to drop into meditation, to, into the higher realms, to use your creativity and your talents to express yourself and to do things perhaps in the extra time that you have right now that you've always wanted to do and you never did, learn something new, learn to play an instrument or to write a book, uh, Learn to to make a poem or to make a clay pot, uh, how to cook a meal you've never made before, to engage completely and absolutely in life, to feel the water on your hands as we know you're washing them all the time, to feel the soap, to be in the presence of everything, to eat in a way you've never eaten before, to really taste the food, to connect uh, in new ways, to fully engage in every present moment to the best of your capacity. And you can go into your power center, into your third center, and you, you can choose to be controlling this at this time or to put others down, to, to focus on what's not happening, what's going wrong, why is it this way, to be a victim, to be feeling hurt that you don't get to do something or go somewhere or, or not have something or things got changed and it wasn't how you had planned it to be. You can to drop into victimhood. Um, or you can use this energy to to utilize it uh, as a force uh, to allow yourself to expand uh, into the to knowing of the power that resides in you and to bring it up to to use it for force of good um, and in the same with the heart center it can be shut or open you can love others uh, and share light uh, or you can shut it down uh, and hide uh, and the same with your throat and your words, what words you choose in this moment to express. And your, your third eye, what you choose to see, to put your energy on and to focus. And all the way up into the crown of the spiritual center. For this virus is called the coronavirus, which means crown. And ultimately, it is to awaken your centers from the base of your spine to the crown to expand the lotus flower above your head and beyond into the higher dimensions of love, unity, and oneness. It is for you to bloom and to blossom in the presence of now for the complete uh, chaos of the mind and the constant chatter and talk uh, of criticism and unworthiness to fall away to the acceptance and the openness and the vulnerability of the truth of your being of who it is that you are in full honesty right now to express it to, to the greatest of your capacity. And so moving through these centers uh, and choosing uh, for them to be open versus closed, to be in love versus fear, to express versus to hide, to be in anxiety versus balance, to move into meditation, to use your breath. (laughs) Breath 
right now is very important. You might notice that there's been a lot of talk about breath work, that it's kind of the new yoga, that you hear about it everywhere in the last year or two, that it's been something new showing up. And it's showing up because when you when you focus on the breath and your energy is with the breath, you move into the presence. You can't be anywhere else. You're just with your breath. And your breath comes from the oxygen expanding and contracting in the lungs. And it is that Mother Earth now has an opportunity to breathe. For you are not polluting her in the way that you had been. And and she gets to exercise her lungs and take greater and deeper breaths. And at the same time, it's a mirror and a reflection of the disease itself, the virus in which is plaguing many of you, attacks the lungs in which one cannot breathe. And and so to support yourself and others, uh, because you don't recognize it from your perspective that you're all interconnected and you're collectively in this, you're actually helping those uh, who right now are sick with the virus uh, to be able to breathe and have it move through them as you practice working with your own breath uh, and as you move into that presence because you don't realize it, but your energetic field goes out miles and miles and aisles and as it connects to another, it connects to another other and so on like a threads in a fabric of a tapestry and so as you expand your breath and deepen your compassion and open your lungs you support those perhaps who are having a hard time breathing and so it's hard to wrap one's uh, mind and that's what exactly what we don't want you to do we don't want you to to drop into contemplation in, in the sense of where you're you're thinking about and trying to figure all of this out We just want you to know that uh, from our perspective, although it is difficult sometimes to hear, this is divinely perfect. And in its perfection is an opportunity. And the opportunity is for the evolution of human consciousness uh, and the preservation of humanity as a whole. And the opportunity for the earth uh, and the animal kingdom to begin to heal and to thrive. And so you will make a choice when we say you as a race uh, as to what will change after this is over, how you will behave if you will return back to normal the way things always have been, or you'll go back uh, to Marshall's buying your stuff and throwing it back out. You'll go back to wasting food and not paying attention to it. If you'll go go back to the busyness of your routine and the collecting of more items, if you'll go back to flying, uh, whether it is hurting the earth or not, and driving all over the place, uh, you'll go back to consuming constant and large amounts of oil and resources. Uh, if you'll go back to a school system that wasn't serving everyone to the greatest capacity, whether you'll go back to a government uh, that only cares for a few why many suffer, whether you'll go back to a healthcare system that is clearly broken will be your decision. And you might say, well, it's not my decision. It's to the decision of those in power. It's to the decision of a few. And we say to you, no, it is not. It is your decision as you choose, as this uh, curtain begins to move aside and the doorways open and you return to how things were, do you choose to rise up and speak and do you choose to change your behavior and do you choose to demand something new? Or will you go back to the old way until another wave will come, another wake up will arrive and that new wake up wave too will be larger, stronger, heavier and louder? Or will you be able to listen to the call? And in listening, will the the second wave be, be here but gentler with another nudge in a way to support you in the crumbling of old systems, eh, to create and to build new, as the third wave comes and the fourth, the crescendo of something magnificent eh, that you had never heard before, a new way, a new thinking, a new idea, a new perception, an opening of that crown, the corona, the crown of the lotus uh, of the chakra above that connects you to your divinity that connects you to source that connects you to who it is that you are remembering that you are more than your flesh more than your body more than your ego more than your name more than all of that and that when you serve from that perspective uh, and honor each other 
something will happen. So right now you're a little uncomfortable. Some are very, some have even lost their lives. And you're going to get even more uncomfortable in the coming weeks as things begin to escalate. And then they will reach a peak and they will begin to descend. Things might start to lift and lighten a bit. But you must hear the calls of this moment and you must act and change from it. We beg of you not to return to ways of the past of the old as usual, for that will not do. And know that uh, energy beings of love and light from the angelic realm and many other dimensions which you cannot perceive from your perception are loving you and are here, and that this too shall pass. But allow it to pass uh, for a purpose and allow it to be for something good. Do not allow those who have perished, who have suffered and have given their lives uh, to be in vain. Use this to change systems, to change governments, to change economics, to change health care, to change families, connection, consuming resources, and most importantly, your connection to the earth. So I want you all to know that it's okay that we ask you to be present, to be still, and to know that you are safe, that you are loved, uh, that you are cared for, and that this will pass and something new will come. And we hope that you will choose love 